Hey, Mark Shepard here, and this is another exciting episode of the Crypto Cranker's Guide to the Galaxy of Greed and Grooviness. And I'm just trying to wrap my head around some of the mass hypnosis that is going on in our culture, in the world right now, between the Ponzi schemes, the scams, the schemes, the and the the ICOs and the the cryptocurrencies and the bubbles in the stock market and the real estate market and the the bond market and just kind of the human interaction in groups from the individual to the group in in the realm of money i'm calling it the hypnosis of money that's the big program it's a 90-day challenge and for those of you <coughs> who've been following me Every Sunday is, uh, I started on Monday, July 31st, 2017. This is now Sunday, August 20, what the hell is it? August 27th, I think it is. Um, and uh, this is my, so this is my 28th day. Uh, I'm about to enter week five of this whole project. And uh, a lot's been going on and I, God, I appreciate you guys following me and, and watching my stuff. And I'm I'm on an adventure where back in February of 2017, I, I just followed my curiosity, the thread of my curiosity. I began to watch documentaries about Bitcoin and this revolution. And I got excited enough about it to say, well, how do I get some, right? How do I get some of this Bitcoin? And so I started going to YouTube and Googling it and, reading things and everybody said go to coinbase so i went to coinbase and i bought my first bitcoin i bought twenty dollars a day i put it on automatic so every day i would just buy twenty dollars whether it went up or when it went down it's called dollar cost averaging and i wanted to somehow find a way to save money because i could never seem to do it in my bank because it's always there and i can always spend it and so i kind of didn't want something that i could spend easily so bitcoin seemed to be the right thing because what are you going to really spend it on uh, and yet it seems to be a way to store and increase value. So I jumped in and just focused on buying Bitcoin a little bit at a time. And then not too long after that, I started hearing about this other thing called Ethereum. So I started researching, what is Ethereum? How is a smart contracts? And it's a different kind of thing. It's, it, it, it's a currency, yet it's a, it's a blockchain. And I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind, my non technical mind around this and so then i discovered there was something called litecoin which was considered to be silver to bitcoin's gold and okay so i'm starting to learn about that and and all i did was spend time every day on the um on the coinbase exchange i looked at their charts and i looked at the one day and the one week and the one month and the, all the years and i started looking at these currencies the way i did back uh in 1990 or something I, I had a short stint trading futures commodities uh, in the attempt to save my four houses which I had bought for nothing down at the top of the real estate bubble from foreclosure and I failed at all of that stuff which was a wonderful learning experience because I know about bubbles I know about value I was doing real estate title insurance where I was doing the closings in New York State and I was seeing people just literally getting contracts to buy condos and flipping the contracts and making 20 grand a month. And that was, you know, back in the, uh, the late 1980s. Um, and so I had to get in, right? I was new, I was young. I saw these guys buying real estate and making a ton of money. So I had to get in. I got in at the end of the market. I got in at the top of the bubble and the bubble popped and all my houses were worth less than I owed on them. Really good lesson to have in your 20s really good lesson to have right and i've watched i watched the 2007 2008 thing happen. oh i also watched the uh, the dot-com bubble pop right and yet out of that dot-com bubble some survived right amazon survived others survived and you know fast forward to today and we are in the midst of a revolution and bitcoin was the first in just like kind of aol was the first in you remember dial up
Do you remember dial up and how awesome it was to get online and it took so long to do anything and and they just kept improving and it kept improving and kept improving it until the user experience on the internet is pretty decent now. And no one uses AOL. If you meet someone who sends you an email from AOL, you know there's someone who does not adapt quickly <laughs> to anything, right? But they finally, they got hooked in by AOL and then it, everything left them, but they're still there. So, so the human mind in all this, how we adapt to change, how we create change in our own lives, how we deal with change that we don't want to have happen, all of these things have a play on what's going on in the whole Bitcoin and cryptocurrency world. And it's fascinating the fuck out of me. <laughs> and so uh, for those of you who have been following me, I immediately got... You know, the shiny object is the uh, the scam, the program. It's just like, hey, we'll pay you 10% a day. Just give us X amount of money, and every day you can take out 10%. And the idea is like, wow, 10%. The average person can figure that shit out in their head. I'm the average person. Yeah, if, I, if it lasts 10 days, I've got my money back. And 10 days isn't a very long time. I'll risk some, okay? So you try one, and it works because you got in maybe early, before somebody like Ryan Birkinus started telling everybody about it and they got so much money in that they decided, you know, we can just close now. We've, we've hit our target. Okay, let's close. Boom. Right. And everybody screwed. Right. So that's why I kind of drew this picture. So I imagine all this money, 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 kind of funneling into this container. And the container is the, is the Ponzi scheme or it could be a cryptocurrency too. Right. And again, the Ponzi idea, this works everywhere. It's not just in money. It's the exponential uh, tendency of the universe. If you're a gardener, you can take cuttings from your tomatoes and take one tomato plant, make a bunch of cuttings and have 20 tomato plants or 100 tomato plants. Right. The universe wants to expand, but we also have to have some kind of container to hold the expansion or and to be able to do something with it, right? So the money goes in and it swishes around, stays in this container, and then some money comes out, right? And at some point, they shut the door and no more money can come out. And yet people are still literally putting money in, putting money in, putting in, because the news gets to them late. It's like... If you've ever been in traffic and everything slows down and then the car, the first car goes and the next car goes and the next car goes, and it takes so long for that information to reach the back of the line, right? Nobody just starts all at the same time. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Okay, so meanwhile, the money goes in and you can't get it out, right? And then... People who want to get the money out start trying to get the money out, right? And they start panicking. This is, you know, this is why there were bank panics. They used to call them a panic. This is why there's a run on a bank. And even if the bank is done well, they don't keep all their assets, you know, in the safe at the bank. They're, you know, watch It's a Wonderful Life. You know, Jimmy Stewart, uh, he told me, well, no, the money's not here. The money you put in is in your house and the money you put in is in your house, right? And that makes kind of sense that, um, you know, the money isn't at the bank. But if everybody runs to the bank at the same time to get their money out, it's a panic. The bank can't give the money, so the bank fails because then everybody runs. And then it makes news, right? Then there's news and bad news. Bad news is like a hundred times, maybe a thousand times more sticky in our brains than good news. So good news, Bitcoin's going up. Oh, it's, it's going up. It's going up. And the latecomers are like, whoa, I got to get into this Bitcoin thing. I saw it in my own friends. I started telling them about Bitcoin. They're like, oh shit, I got to get some. There was this urgency, this like, it's going, the train is leaving without me. That is a basics 
just a human nature thing. That's how our minds are wired. Again, hypnosis of money, people. It's the hypnosis of money. How we are communicating to ourselves, how we are communicating to others, how we are responding to suggestions, unconscious suggestions from all around us, and our unconscious mind is constantly filtering information and trying to help us make good decisions, but it's based on a hunter-gatherer template. And we are no longer there. This is this is beyond our evolutionary uh, pay grade, right? So, so panic happens. Eventually, these people get the message, and they stop, right? They stop putting their money in. However, there are still people putting money into some of these dead programs that I was exploring a month ago that are no longer like this thing called Ambus. I actually did pretty well in Ambus because I got in at the right time because I was a total newbie. I didn't know anything. And I'm like, I'm an experiential learner. I'm going to jump into this and see what the fuck happens so that if I get burned, someone else can go, oh, this is what happens, right? So I don't need to do it myself. And hopefully that's what you guys have figured out. And um, so people stop going in. But meanwhile, all this value all of their work and energy is no longer in their possession and it's gone. Where did it go? It went in here. But it's like, think of this. That's how I felt about Bitcoin yesterday when just nothing was working. I made a transaction and it hung up. Nothing happened. It's just like, what the fuck? Right? It was just like the same feeling that the people get when a Ponzi scheme stops fucking working. Okay? Now, Will Bitcoin come back? Is Bitcoin so huge that it's going to keep going for a while? Well, yeah. Well, the the American and global stock exchanges are the same way. They may not be ready to fail yet, but those of those of us who are kind of from the outside looking in and looking at human nature and looking at history and looking at the charts going, holy shit, we are in a massive bubble in so many areas of our economy something's going to happen. And that fact is driving people into Bitcoin as well because they want to protect themselves, right? However, are they really protecting themselves by getting into Bitcoin? I don't know. Certainly by educating themselves and getting used to it and trying it and all that kind of stuff. And we want to encourage that. At this point, though, if I have friends, I'm not going to say, hey, you should get some Bitcoin. I'm just like, just wait a little bit. Or go to Coinbase and buy Litecoin. Do not buy Ethereum. Do not buy Bitcoin. Buy Litecoin and then put Litecoin in your wallet and exchange it for Dash or other things that are beginning to be useful and usable, right? That's the advice I would give my friends. And if that makes me a scarecrow or a henny penny, okay. But I'm looking at this from the point of view of the human mind and how we are we are hypnotized in mass, right? And if you don't think you're being hypnotized every fucking day, you need to think again because every advertisement you look at, every newspaper report, every television report, anything you look at that has an opinion is there's a constant balance going on inside us, in your mind, evaluating, is this true? How does this apply to me? What should I do about this? It is constantly evaluating the environment to see, is it safe to go down this trail? You know, is this really a deer trail, right? Or is it, <clears throat> is it a trap by the tribe across the mountain who live in the other valley and are they coming to attack us, right? Let's pay attention, people, to the signs of the environment, right? <clears throat> so... Right now, today, I'm not seeing much difference between the Ponzi schemes like Ambus and Bit Lake and Bit Swamp and Bit Island and Bit Peninsula and Bit This and Bit That. Bitbyte.biz, by the way, is a URL that's available. I checked it out. You know? It's not looking too much different. And even today, when I tried the exchanges again on camera, watched the previous video to this one, video number two. Uh, I literally was able to exchange Bitcoin for Dash and Bitcoin for Litecoin. And to be honest with you, I got rid of all my Bitcoin. Why did I get rid of it? Because it's it has problems and they haven't fixed it yet. And the average person is just frustrated and doesn't know what to do. 
and they're either going to stop buying Bitcoin and stay on the sidelines or they're going to exchange Bitcoin for things that actually work, right? And Litecoin is such right now, the way I'm looking at it, and I can be wrong as well, and this is emotion as well, it's early enough, it's low enough priced, it has room to move, it works quickly, they seem to have a team that knows how to solve all the problems that Bitcoin and Ethereum are having. And so they have a clean slate. Let's call it a second generation currency. And then there's another currency called IOTA, which is they're calling themselves a third generation cryptocurrency and they use something called Tangle. So there is a lot going on here. We have not settled much yet, but is the Bitcoin Ponzi scheme over? If something is unusable, and slow and not trustworthy why is that money why is that good money right it has to be trustable it has to be usable it has to be convenient it has to be fast all of these different things and be aware that the news and the hypnosis of the marketplace are literally like viruses they're thought viruses and these thought viruses can sweep through rapidly and things can change like that, right? That's the volatility. And as a trader, volatility is good. You want it to go up and then go down so that you can learn the rhythm of the market to get in and get out. And that to me is kind of interesting. It's fascinating. But ultimately, when you're trading currencies, you're not creating anything. You're not doing anything. And uh, I discovered this guy, Richard Hart, uh, yesterday when I was just trying to find out who's talking about this where can I find some information about what the fuck is happening Bitcoin was slow and then it became beyond slow it became ridiculously slow and evidently this really was an attack on Bitcoin and so Bitcoin can be forgiven however I'm gonna take care of me and my perception is that I can't really trust my transactions to go through in a timely manner it's been slow and people have been bitching about it being slow for two fucking years. If FedEx delivered their packages a day late for two years, do you think they'd still be in business? If Amazon suddenly stopped doing what they do well and you order something and it takes a week to get when last month it took a, literally a day and you got it overnight. I mean, sometimes with Amazon, I feel like, man, I just ordered it and boom, I walk out of my door and it's there. Like, how did that happen? And that is the free market and the end user determining what is going to be used. And if it ain't useful and if it doesn't fucking work and if it takes too long, right, these are things to watch out for. And, you know, so the Bitcoin all the different groups in Bitcoin need to get their shit together or they're going to be arguing about something that no one cares about because it's going to be too late. They were first in and they did their job and it got the thing rolling. The steam engine is rolling. But at some point, you know, you go from walking, then you ride on a horse, then maybe you ride on a bicycle, then you find a car, then an airplane. And meanwhile, steam engines aren't really used anymore, are they? But they were the first... They were the first to really get transportation going for the masses because you didn't have to buy a horse. All you had to do is buy a ticket. You don't have to feed a ticket. A train is a great option if you want to move a bunch of people and move them long distances, right? But it can't compete with an airplane. Can't. We are looking for an airplane here, people. And again, the airplanes came in. The Wright brothers didn't invent the, the Boeing 747 the first day. No, a lot of shit happened with airplanes. And within 10 years, 20 years, so much had happened with airplanes that people could literally buy a ticket and ride on an airplane, right? And improvements have gone on and on and on as, as crashes have happened, right? Every new technology has had its period of, of really looking shitty, right? So that's where we are right now. We're at a place where mass adoption is ready to happen. And when it does happen, look out, right? It is, it's, you know, the news just came in that Vietnam has, you know, said, hey, yeah, Bitcoin's legitimate. Well, it's a little fucking late if Bitcoin doesn't work. So Bitcoin needs to fix its shit fast. And hopefully SegWit will do that. If it doesn't do it, 
I don't care. It doesn't matter because there's other currencies. Do you see? I have choices as an end user. I have choices and I'm going to choose the best choice for me. And if you are too allegiant to any one thing, you're going to get stuck. Like there are people like, oh, I got to get into this Ambus thing. Ambus was great. I loved Ambus. And for a while I did. I was looking at my money cranking up every moment. It was exciting. It was psychologically powerful. And I have to say, we will see, um, we will see Ponzi schemes in Litecoin and Dash. You will see them soon. Watch it. Watch my prediction. All right. So that's, that's my little diagram. And man, I'm having a great time today ranting. Thank you people for your patience and thanks for all the comments. Um, I'm getting a little behind on the comments. My, my first video this morning got a bunch of comments and I'm going to go read those and I'm going to respond to you guys. And I really appreciate your engagement because who else is going to help us do this? Right. And, and I'm trying to be a, an intermediary between the technology and the actual end user and to find out, you know, can I help? Can I be useful here? Can I be helpful? Because I am someone who learns constantly. I'm a self-taught learner, taught myself to play guitar. I'm teaching this to myself. And um, I only learn what I want to know. I'm like school where you're supposed to learn all this stuff that actually has no use whatsoever. And that's another rant I'll get to for another day on, on how our educational system is fucking us up the ass. And uh, <laughs> I'm having a good time, people. I appreciate your comments. And there's room for divergence of opinion if we can respect the fact that we are going to have divergent opinions and we can talk about this. And if, if you can talk about it, I really welcome your comments. If you're just going to be a troll, that's okay too. But I would like to engage in like lively discussions that get us somewhere. I'm not interested in just arguing about stuff. I really, I'm going to try stuff and I'm going to keep trying stuff and I'm going to tell you guys what I'm trying and you can make your own decision. And if you like this stuff, please subscribe, please share, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And, um, cause that helps me to help more people. And I will be, uh, continuing tomorrow with week number five of my 90 day challenge to explore the world of cryptocurrencies and ways to use those cryptocurrencies. I call it the crypto crankers guide to the universe or the galaxy of greed. And we'll see where we go from here. I'm hoping to start connecting with some Bitcoin and cryptocurrency thought leaders and see if I can get them to kind of explain some stuff for the rest of us. All right. That's it for now. Peace, grooviness over and out. My name is Mark Shepard. Start the music now.